Love the British monarchy? You've come to the right place. Welcome to the To Die For Daily podcast with Kinsey Schofield. Take it away, Kinsey. Hi, all. Kinsey Schofield here with the To Die For Daily podcast. And today we're talking to Niall Gardner, the director of the Heritage Foundation's Margaret Thatcher Center for Freedom. Niall, I had the distinct pleasure of meeting you at Buckingham Palace. Um, It was nighttime. The Queen had just passed away. And it was so... Uh, interesting to kind of see you in your element around all of these public figures and and political figures that were familiar with you because of your work with Margaret Thatcher. Well, Kenzie, it's, it's lovely to see you again. And many thanks for having me on the show. A great pleasure. Thank you, sir. Now, I, as I mentioned, you did work with Margaret Thatcher. That had to have been such an incredible opportunity. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about that and how that transitioned into your work with the Heritage Foundation? Uh, yes, I worked for, for Lady Thatcher from 2000 to 2002 in her private office in London, and I assisted her with her final book, Statecraft, uh, Strategies for a Changing World, and also worked with her on foreign policy uh, issues. It was an absolutely incredible experience to be working for the, for the Iron Lady. Um, <laughs> she was a tremendous uh, inspiration, uh, and I learned so much from working uh, for her. Uh, she was uh, a woman of tremendous uh, courage principle, conviction, uh, somebody who really fundamentally transformed Britain for the better. Uh, She stood up to the might of the evil empire. Of course, alongside uh, Ronald Reagan, uh, she was a huge part of the US-UK special relationship. Uh, And Margaret Thatcher, I think, really was such an incredibly uh, inspiring uh, leader, someone who really transformed uh, much of the free world, uh, somebody who stood up for great a conservative leadership and, and principles, uh, and, and an Iron Lady who really, I think, exemplified uh, the British uh, spirit. Uh, she is greatly missed uh, today. Uh, and, and I think that uh, here in the United States, of course, there is huge admiration for Margaret Thatcher, her legacy, and everything uh, she achieved. And the Margaret Thatcher Center, Center for Freedom is the uh, living embodiment of that legacy. It's her own personal uh, think tank. She founded it herself. Uh, and Margaret Thatcher set up the Thatcher Centre uh, in order to advance the US-UK special relationship uh, and to shape uh, US policy towards uh, the UK and, and Europe. Incredible. I just briefly, I, I don't know if, I don't think I told you I was going to ask you this question, but based on what you just described, that's not necessarily the the character I saw in The Crown. When you watched The Crown, what was your response to their portrayal of, of Margaret Thatcher? Did you think it was you know, not the woman that you worked so closely with? Um, it was very interesting. So I did watch uh, that season of The Crown, I think twice. Uh, and uh, Margaret Thatcher, of course, features very heavily in that season of The Crown. Uh, the performance by uh, Gillian Anderson is very good uh, and in some places very life-like. Uh, and overall, actually, I thought the portrayal of Margaret Thatcher uh, was a, a very positive one from, from the Crown. And uh, there were fears, of course, that the Crown would put forward a negative uh, view of Margaret Thatcher. But, but I thought that actually, overall, the depiction of Margaret Thatcher was far more uh, positive than, than many had, had feared uh, in advance. And I, I do think Margaret Thatcher came across as an incredibly uh, powerful and principal figure uh, in in the crown, uh, and uh, I would say though I, I do think the the relationship between uh, Margaret Thatcher and, and the Queen uh, was significantly uh, closer than the one depicted in uh, in the crown itself. Uh, I, I do think that Lady Thatcher and the Queen got on uh, very well. They saw eye to eye on so many things. There were some disagreements as the crown. Uh, demonstrated, but I think there was tremendous admiration uh, on, on the part of, of Margaret Thatcher for the Queen and, and, and vice versa as well. I, mean, I, I think they were two great figures who really led uh, the free world for so many uh, decades, and, and both the Queen uh, and Margaret Thatcher, an incredible inspiration to us all. Oh, wonderful answer. I'm glad to hear you say that. Um, now, for royal watchers, they're hearing the words, the Heritage Foundation a lot of them for the first time. Can you tell me what the Heritage Foundation is? So the Heritage Foundation is uh, America's uh, largest uh, conservative uh, think tank. 
It is dedicated to advancing conservative ideas and principles. Uh, it is, uh, I think, a, a powerful uh, battleship in many ways for the conservative movement in, in the United States. Uh, and it has around 500,000 uh, members. Uh, it is uh, a think tank that really plays a very, very important role uh, in shaping uh, thinking on, on Capitol Hill uh, and, and across the, the United States. And at the end of the day, the Heritage Foundation is uh, dedicated to advancing uh, conservative uh, principles and ideas, leadership for America based upon conservative uh, principles. Uh, and Margaret Thatcher for many years actually was the patron of the Heritage uh, Foundation. She was a very regular visitor to Heritage. She loved Heritage. Uh, and it was a home away from home for her in the United States. Wonderful. Uh, so how does Prince Harry get on the Heritage Foundation's radar? Can you walk me through that process? Yeah, that's that's a great uh, question. Uh, and uh, of course, the Heritage Foundation uh, focuses uh, very, very heavily upon the US-UK special relationship. It takes a very close interest in issues relating to, uh, to the British uh, monarchy. Uh, and when Prince Harry's uh, book, uh, Spare, was published at the beginning of last year, uh, there were widespread revelations in that book of, of drug use mm. by the prince. We were very concerned about, about that. Uh, we did think it was very damaging, actually, uh, to the, the British monarchy, the, the revelations. Uh, and uh, uh, it was certainly our, our view at the time uh, that Prince Harry should be held to account uh, for, those, uh, for those revelations. He openly boasted of widespread and extensive uh, drug use. Uh, and uh, the Heritage Foundation, of course, is dedicated to border security, uh, to the enforcement of immigration uh, law. Uh, and uh, it's certainly our view that uh, Prince Harry, uh, when he uh, applied uh, for a US visa, should have been held fully to account for his drug use. So uh, we, we called for the release of Prince Harry's immigration uh, records to the American people, because we think this is a matter of of great public interest. Uh, the Biden administration refused uh, to, uh, to, re to release those records. And we then decided to sue the Department of Homeland Security in order to secure uh, the release uh, of those records. Uh, and so that, that issue is now being settled by a, a US federal uh, judge. Uh, we had the second federal court hearing, in fact, last uh, Friday in Washington, DC. So it's become a, a very big uh, legal case. In fact, one of the most high profile uh, immigration related legal cases in, in recent US history. Uh, and uh, we do believe we have a very good chance of winning this uh, and securing the release of Prince Harry's immigration records uh, for the American people. No one should be uh, above the law. That includes uh, uh, royalty. Uh, and uh, we, we believe that everyone should be treated equally and fairly uh, when they apply for entry into the United States. Uh, and we want to establish whether or not uh, Prince Harry was fully truthful uh, and accurate uh, in his in disclosure of his drug use when he applied to the United States. We also want to establish whether or not there was any kind of favoritism, preferential treatment given by, uh, by the United States government, which would be fundamentally wrong, of course. Uh, everyone should be treated equally when they, they apply uh, to, to the United States under immigration laws. So, so that's really the, the genesis, the origin of this. Well, and what I could not believe was that the Biden administration, one of their attorneys, their argument was that spare perhaps was exaggerated. I mean, first of all, I'd love your reaction to that. But second of all, I just wanted to read you this headline from Vanity Fair. It's March 2023. And the headline from Vanity Fair is Prince Harry says psychedelics are a fundamental part of his life. Now, he was discussing these hallucinogenics in an interview he did with Dr. Gabe Matei, I believe is how you pronounce his name. I'm not I'm not familiar with him, but he's very big on Instagram. This was a pay for play sit down that the two did um, to promote Harry's book spare. So these are words coming out of Harry's own mouth on video. But he said um, of hallucinogenics 
course, it was the cleaning of the windscreen, the removal of life's filters, these layers of filters that removed it all for me and brought me a sense of relaxation, relief, comfort, a lightness that I managed to hold back for a period of time. He added, I started doing it rec recreationally and then started to realize how good it was for me. I would say it is one of the fundamental parts of my life that changed me and helps me deal with traumas and the pains of the past. They're unlocking so much of what we've suppressed. So are, is the Biden administration just not doing their homework? There is tangible evidence. Uh, I mean, I know he's not perjured himself because it's not testimony on a stand, but there's plenty to back up the fact that Prince Harry has utilized drugs in the future. He's calling it a fundamental part of his life. Yeah, exactly, uh, Kinsey. And in fact, I was in court uh, on Friday uh, listening to all of the arguments being put forward by the Biden administration's lawyers. And it was absolutely preposterous, uh, th this, this idea uh, that uh, Prince Harry may have been uh, uh, lying about uh, dr drug use or embellishing it in his own book. I mean, this, this book has Prince Harry's name on it. <laughs> it is clearly evidence of drug use admitted to by Prince Harry multiple occasions in his book. He's also given, as you pointed out, a whole series of interviews not only talking about his drug use, but even extolling the use, praising the use of drugs. Uh, and uh, the reality is uh, drugs are dangerous. They kill people. Right. Uh, and Prince Harris has boasted about using drugs. And he's also encouraged the use of drugs through his interviews, frankly, by giving a positive spin on it. Uh, and so uh, the the arguments by the, the Biden administration's lawyers law is absolutely preposterous, ridiculous, uh, laughable, uh, uh, frankly. Uh, and uh, Harry himself has admitted widely to drug use. It's all in his own book with his own name uh, on it. Uh, that's a lot of evidence that that could, could be used in any court, frankly. Now, if Prince Harry did lie on his visa application, I guess not to jump ahead of myself, you had a good day in court that the judge suggested that he might take a peek at the, this paperwork to determine whether or not um, it might lean in your favor or not. If Prince Harry lied on his visa application, does protocol dictate that the government automatically begins the process of determining some type of consequence? Or will the Heritage Foundation or other entities have to fight for consequences? Yeah, those, those are great questions, very important questions. And, and firstly, with regard to the hearing, uh, yes, the, the hearing went very, very well. Uh, and the federal judge uh, declared at the end that he may well ask to see Prince Harry's immigration records for himself uh, because the judge has not yet seen the records. Mm. And he indicated that he may make that decision very, very soon. That's a very significant step if the judge requests to see uh, Harry's immigration uh, records. Uh, and if those records are released to, uh, to the general public, if it is revealed that Prince Harry has lied on his application, that's a criminal offense. That's a very serious matter. Normally in those instances, individuals that have lied on immigration applications are removed from the United States, and that's the law. Uh, and, and so I think the stakes and the consequences here are extremely high for, for Prince Harry. If Prince Harry has not lied on his application, if he's being completely truthful, he should be fully supporting the release of those immigration records, but so far complete silence from Prince Harry himself. And I do find it astonishing that the Biden administration is refusing to release those records. What are they hiding? Uh, and uh, they are fighting tooth and nail against the release of the records on the grounds of Prince Harry's privacy. He's one of the most public figures in the whole world. He's given a huge number of, of interviews. He's spoken extensively about his own private uh, life together with, with Meghan Markle. Uh, and uh, this whole uh, idea that uh, you know ha Harry's privacy must be protected after he's given uh, so many interviews speaking about his own private life. I mean, this is completely and utterly ridiculous, but that's what the Biden administration is arguing. And, and one has to ask, what are they hiding here? Let the American people see Prince Harry's immigration records. Let them judge for themselves what is in those, those records. Uh, and uh, I, I do think that it is outrageous, unacceptable uh, that you have the most powerful administration on earth, the Biden uh, presidency, protecting Prince Harry's immigration records from the American people. Uh, this is uh, an outrageous move. We are campaigning at Heritage. We're calling for 
transparency, openness, accountability uh, here. And, and the, the Biden administration should be fully accountable to the American people. So that, that's what we're calling for, transparency, openness and accountability here. Well, I don't think anybody would ever accuse the Biden administration of transparency. Uh, but really quickly, um, former President Trump, he recently said he would not go as soft on Prince Harry as the Biden administration. He told The Express, I wouldn't protect him. He betrayed the queen. That's unforgivable. He would be on his own if it was down to Trump. He said, I think they would have or that they've been way too gracious for what he has done. So I'd like to know, oh, what is your reaction to President Trump's um response. Obviously, this is a president that would, I think, jump on board of this campaign to know the truth behind Prince Harry's visa application. Well, I'm glad you referenced the uh, the interview by The Express with uh, former President uh, Trump, which took place uh, over the weekend at, at CPAC, the Conservative Political Action Conference uh, meeting uh, just outside of Washington. Uh, and uh, Donald Trump made it uh, categorically clear in this interview uh, that he uh, opposed the refusal to uh, release uh, Prince Harry's immigration uh, records. In fact, he condemned uh, the, the refusal by the Biden administration to release those records. And he made it 100% clear in this interview that he would not uh, protect uh, Prince Harry from, uh, from public scrutiny if he became uh, president uh, for a second uh, time. And I do think that um, Donald Trump is a president who believes in openness and transparency and accountability. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, President Trump took a very dim view of this idea that uh, Prince Harry, uh, his immigration record should be protected by the Biden administration. So I I'm glad that uh, President Trump spoke out on this very important issue. And I think his views re reflect the vast majority of the American people who want to see accountability here. They want to see the rule of law enforced uh, by the, the US uh, administration. So uh, I think that uh, Donald Trump was absolutely 100% right in his comments this weekend. Okay, I have one more minute with you, and I'm going to take advantage of it. Um, I think you've already answered this beautifully, but the Heritage Foundation's ultimate objective, I know that a lot of people are saying he could be deported, but I don't, I, it's my opinion that that's not your objective. Your objective is just transparency. You just want honesty in, in this scenario. A am I correct or am I incorrect in that uh, assumption? Yeah, all we're calling for uh, in, in our court uh, case here is for the release of Prince Harry's records. What happens next, of course, is a matter for, uh, for US uh, authorities. Uh, and we, we believe, of course, in the enforcement of the rule of law. And of course, if there is any uh, evidence of lying or wrongdoing on this application, uh, there should be consequences. Uh, but that is a matter for, uh, for US authorities to follow up on. And uh, it is up to the American people, of course, to to see exactly what is in Prince Harry's uh, records. They have a right to know. So we are we are calling for transparency and openness here from the United States uh, government. Uh, and we are calling for the release of those, of those records. And we're calling for Prince Harry to be held to account. And we're calling, of course, for the United States government to be fully held to account as well over its own actions with regard to this immigration application. Oh, well, Niall, I'm so grateful for your time. I know how busy you are. I see you on TV like all the time. So I'm so grateful for um, your time today. And if you wouldn't mind, when there's an update, I, I might poke you again to see if you might give us an update on, on the case. Um, but congratulations on all of your success. And this has been, this is a historical moment. This is really interesting to watch. And um, I, I'm just so grateful that you've taken the time to explain it to us so clearly. Uh, my, my pleasure, Kinsey. Uh, very grateful to you for this, this interview uh, today on what is a very important uh, uh, matter and, and, and a great pleasure to be uh, on, on your show today. Many thanks. Thank you.